All right, thank you. Um, I have a question, and this one is for Jermaine. Um, you mentioned student parking earlier, and uh, I, we know that plenty of students have already bought tickets and you guys are sold out pretty quickly. However, there are many students on campus that still don't know that there's parking available. I know when current um, junior councilman Rafael Molina started the campaign for the parking, he uh, tried really hard to work with the parking garages in getting this lowered, and now we currently have the prices of $5 per ticket. Um, however, how do you guys plan on promoting this even further? Because in terms of number-wise, I'm pretty sure a lot of students still don't know about it. Well, first, I'd like to say we sold out twice, and uh, we just asked for more tickets. Uh, students are well informed, and the population for students coming to our office is asking for tickets and scholarship applications. So the best way to advertise is to keep, continue to do what we're doing and make more flyers, continue to uh, give flyers to SLD, and it's been successful with parking. And many students will try our best to reach out to all 11,000 students so they can be a form of parking. Okay, thank you. And after that, I would actually see no flyers pertaining to parking. Only time I've actually seen a flyer that has parking on it is his campaign flyer that has parking on it. There were flyers. There's none. There were flyers. There were flyers. There were flyers. I'm taking offense to that. It's on the plasmas all around school. Obviously. Don't take it there. Don't take it there. Let them go. Please leave your comments for after. We'll be taking questions from the audience. If I may also add to that, um, my administration, well, my team and I have also thought of um, doing something about the parking situation because we had no idea, none of us, all four of us, had no idea that there was already something stated. Um, and we asked around the students, what would you like us to do if we were elected? And they all said, do something about bar uh, parking, do something about tuition, do something about printing. And those are the three we went after. So therefore, I'm saying nobody or the majority of students don't know about parking. Every single student that we ask, do you, do you drive to campus? Where do you park your car? Oh, I just have to look for somewhere. Once we found out that there was something done for parking, we asked, do, don't you know that there's um, discounted parking tickets, and they said, what, where, when, when did this happen, why wasn't I informed? So again, I go back to, once you have a great idea, you gotta let your public know. So the website would be a wonderful way. Flyers all over 510, Pratt 510 is not enough. Not every student on campus walks into Pratt 510 on a daily basis or even a weekly basis. I personally go there once every few months. So. It's, it's very hard, and when you're sitting there, sometimes you have to run to class. So you're, you're in, you're out, and that's it. You don't take time to look around. Flyers need to be everywhere. The plasma screens move so fast. There's so many ads on there, you can't possibly expect the student to memorize every single ad. So it's, it's just, it all comes down to publicizing. Okay. Thank you. And as a follow-up question, earlier you guys mentioned you uh, allocated most of your budget toward the student clubs. Yet, however, there were two student clubs that were rejected uh, repeatedly. How can you prevent this from happening again? Only because um, do you feel that every student, every student club should be allocated in order to them, in order for them to be recognized, or do you feel that they can, you know, uh, not be rec uh, not be allocated money but still be recognized as a club? That's supposed to me. Okay, that was a good question. Okay, so. Yes, we, we are aware there are two organizations that were not allocated this semester. We approved those organizations, but we unanimously voted as a democracy that not to fund them because we our funds right now are short because it's a semester. There were still things to do to put a remaining in the semester. But no, we plan to allocate every club that is approved with a decent budget. Fair, if budget gets are turned in, if events are done on campus for all students, then we can allocate the budget. That's how the budget kit works. They turn in the budget kit at the end of the semester. The treasurer goes through the budget kits, and based off of the rationale and based off what they have done the pre previous year, that is how funds are allocated. So we plan to do the same this year, and we plan to allocate funds properly and fairly to all organizations. And we also ask for certain organizations, are you, are you nationally funded? And if they're nationally funded, we ask, well, can we allow these funds to go towards another organization that does not have money at all? So we also ask for that of the organization, they're nationally funded. So these are all the things that we look into as SGA before we allocate funds. 
So to answer your question, we allocate funds to the best availability fairly, and we do it based off the rationale and based off what the organization has done prior for the students on campus. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So my question is for Akeem. I know that you were part of our student government in the past. So what difficulties did you face, and how did you improve or handle them? Well, actually, in the past, when we was on the um, resident, former resident Joy Hippolyte, well, we had a great relationship with both the administration and students. So we basically see what the clubs want and what they need. And almost every, well, actually, every organization was given funds. And we actually fought for the organization. We actually encouraged students to actually partake. And at the time when we was um, involved, a lot of funds were raised by outsiders, because back at that time, a lot of events, outsiders could come. And over 80% of the events kept on campus. Now, outsiders can't come. I think having outsiders come and charge them more, like most universities do, will actually help us raise more money for um, our organization budget yeah. and um, allocation of funds. Thank you. And Jimmy, you being in this leadership position now, what difficulties do you face and how do you improve or plan to handle it or improve next year? The difficulties that we face is that uh, Sometimes we get like a, a crisis or something that happened, we get it at the last minute and we have to act fast. So we would like to, in order to fix that, we want to continue to develop a relationship with faculty, staff, and students to find out what is taking place and handle it before it gets out of control. So we don't want people coming to the office and saying the day before that something is happening. We want to go out and find out what's happening. We want to go out and research. We want to go out and do surveys. This is what we plan to do next year with our newsletter. We just placed the uh, plasma screen in front of our office, so that way that all students, all organizations, when they walk by our office, when we're not in the office, they can see what is going on when we're not there at nighttime, before we open the office during club hours, so they, they can see what is taking place with our office inside and out. And also to add to that, um, in the past, one issue we actually faced, even though we had a budget that was much smaller, we had a budget of 175000 you encourage organizations to do um, events together, so that will make the, um, the financial tension less. And they will actually use all their resources to have more events. That's why we had more events for a smaller budget than you guys currently have now. We are now approached the 40 mark. Do you guys want to do your closing statement before we get to the next? Um, we would like the Q&A from the audience. If anyone has any questions, you can see. <coughs> I have one question on the comment. First, you guys are drawing the word majority around. There's 11,000 students. Does that mean that you guys personally spoke to more than 5,000 students? I'm saying the majority of students that I spoke to. And I oh, okay. I, I didn't mean the majority of students because I could not ever say I know all the students or three quarters or any sort of a majority. But the, the students that we spoke to, we are involved. We have, um, far, we know pharmacy students, we know honor students, <clears throat> excuse me, non-pharmacy students, all through um, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, graduate students, and <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we reached out to faculty to let us know when we could reach the uh, majority of their students that they teach, and we came in and we spoke to them too, and that's how we based our feedback. I, I didn't keep tallies of how many students we spoke to. I know it's definitely not 11,000, it's not 8,000, um, but we did speak to a good portion of... Um, the majority of 200 people, basically. 200 I don't think, people just in pharmacy, there's 600 students, and not including the 200 that are in their sixth year that are doing rotations. So that that's 600 that aren't on campus, but we spoke to the 600 students in pharmacy. There's um, a good uh, portion of, in honors, I believe it's um, 100 or 200, another, that's another 200. We also know um, students from grad programs. So it's, it's not just you know, 100, 200 students. It's, it's a good number. It's not the majority of students on campus, unfortunately, because we, between four people, we're not physically capable of doing that without the resources of SGA already in our power. But we spoke to as many as we could physically reach. Okay, can I just ask what events you actually did? you guys needed more money? We have, um, as part of the American Pharmaceutical Association, we are a, a chapter of um, a, the American, the, the full national, it's a national spectrum, and although we are not nationally funded, 
Um, we are expected to attend conferences for professional leadership, and we are expected to be there to work laws. Um, we, what we do at these conferences twice a year, we, um, we come in with ideas for changes that should be made in our profession um, and in our schools to increase um, the, the memberships and the events and the social events that are, that are being done under okay, to answer the question, just because I know we're on a time limit, yeah. okay. events that you have put on this year. What well, are we, we we have, school. For the entire for school, the body. school yes. we had the uh, APHA volleyball tournament that was very early on in the semester. We have we tried to publicize, but again, our budget was not so great this year, so we could not get the word out that well. We had to resort to word of mouth, and like I said before, that can only reach so many students. Um, we had ideas for other events in mind. Um, we had events for, it's, it's generally a pharmacy society, so we do, most of our events are geared toward pharmacy students. We had a bunch of students in a walk for, to end diabetes. We had um, students taking blood pressure and counseling patients on heartburn and things like that. So they are geared towards pharmacy students, but any student in nursing or any of the health professions can also participate. It sounds like um, you say like a lot of things about like pharmacy. When you become president, are you gonna more gear your, your campaign or the way how you run your presidency if you become president? Are you gonna more gear it to pharmacy students? Is that the reason why like you're running so because like I know like in the past for other pharmacy when they would um come into be president, like the only people who would be involved were pharmacy students. Are you going to like try to direct this mainly towards pharmacy or are you what plans do you have to direct it towards the whole entire school? First I want to point out that when uh, there was a pharm it wasn't even a pharmacy administration, it was half pharmacy and half not pharmacy, this was last year. Um, the students that were participating in events were not majority pharmacy because a lot of the pharmacy students don't want to participate anyway because they have so much studying to do and they put that before everything else. So what I'm saying is when, if I get to be in the uh, presidential chair in SGA, our administration is going to work to be equal um, in everything, in, in the money, the allocation of funds the spacing of events for students. They're not just going to be pharmacy geared. I'm talking just about that one club. It was geared toward pharmacy because it's called the American Pharmaceutical Soci uh, Association. It's not really, you know, it's not supposed to be for <coughs> arts majors. It's not supposed to be for history majors. That's just that one club. And so, you know, you can't help it if that's what that their focus is. And um, so my I'm be short. So this is for all of you, because um, I think a lot of you speak out of inexperience, and I know that you worked with Joe and Hippolyte, but that was maybe over five years ago. Um, so your budget is going to be different. Tuition has ris uh, rise. We no longer pay $35 a semester. It's now 65 Graduate students pay more. Um, you know, and I think that it's really important you guys keep talking about how you want to advertise and you want to give it to the students. You want people to know. I haven't heard about any CSM events. I haven't heard about any of your club's events. And that's on me as a student. You know, but it's also on you. And I want to know how individually each of you think that you're going to be able to advertise, aside from Siwanaka, aside from WLU, aside from just putting up flyers on the TVs that people don't look at. How, how do you think that you're going to be able to advertise? You talk about this a lot. You guys seem to be informed. You seem to be a lot uh, have a lot of misinformation about how to advertise, a lot of inexperience. So how do you think you can take that? What I want to do is, like I said before, I set up a functional student government website where students of all clubs and the students that aren't in clubs can go on and see a calendar of events, what club is sponsoring what event, what time it's held, how long it's scheduled to run for, what it's about, what it takes to be there, um, what else is there an alternative event the next day or, or the week after because I can't go to this one, I have class, or I can't go to this one, I have another obligation, work or, or family or whatever it is. A functional student website with a forum for students to post what they would like to see as events so that we're not leaving any student out.
Yes. Yes. I don't think you guys know about rebuilds that we bought the last administration got. It um, didn't work. So great. Right, what we wanted was a resource. Yeah. So uh, our idea is re-elected for next year. We plan to do something for our campus called SGA Day. Pretty much over the summertime, during our workshops, we will plan our events. Last year, we planned events. Some of them didn't happen, some of them did happen. But during the summertime, we plan to do reasonable events, reasonable occasions that will be beneficial for all students. And we want, during the first week, aside from convocation, aside from LIU Day, we want to have an SGA Day where we teach students how to do contracts, teach students how to do proposals, teach students how to uh, find scholarships on campus, financial aid awareness, all of this in one week. Yes, we know classes will be happening, but we will have separate schedules with the council members to uh, accommodate everyone. We'll order tables to line up outside of the SGA office. We'll have events already, we'll have the flyers lined up on the tables. We will have the plasma TV on. We will have all the TVs with our events on there. We will try our best to accommodate all students. That's what we plan to do. We've been talking about it for the last uh, past few weeks for planning SGA Day for the next fall semester for all students, incoming and transfer students. So that is our plan to advertise. We want to be set for the fall before the fall comes. We're learning from our incidents, we're learning from our mistakes, and we want to build upon that. I got a question. Having been a part of this whole process election debate for about the last five years, um, I hear everybody stating that they want to do something new, something that's trailblazing that no one's ever done for them before, but once that administration gets in the office, they do the exact same thing the last administration did. I want to know what different. I don't want to know about events. I don't want to know about allocations. I, don't, I want to know what are you going to do, what kind of presence are you going to set on this campus for the students to look to you as their administration. Because it doesn't matter who's in office, if you're inadequate, you're inadequate. So I want to know what are you really going to do, and that's to everyone. Okay, I agree with that last statement. If you're inadequate, you're inadequate, uh, no matter what position you hold. Um, my team and I are hoping to expand the parking discount since currently, like I said before, not many people know about it and they sell out so fast probably to the same, like, I don't know how many tickets there are, but to the same students over and over. I want to expand it because since it's a majority commuter school, it, it would be very beneficial to have a greater number of students able to purchase these tickets. Um, and if they don't drive every day, they just take the trains, fine, that's okay too. You don't have to buy it. It's, it's available for those that do. So we're going to do um, some kind of a survey and see exactly how many students drive and would be interested in these. And we won't just have a contract or an agreement with one or two parking garages. We're going to look to every parking garage around the area. I have j just to, because I know every, uh, everyone also says the commuter school thing. If you ever paid attention to our financial aid bills, there is a transportation fee of about $750. And not everybody who commutes actually drives, they take the train. So how can we set something up with that where monthly metro cards or something? Like say something that nothing, nobody's done before. Can I respond to this? Yes. Uh, can we keep the answers short? We have 10 minutes and I want to get some more questions. Okay, we'll keep it brief. Uh, student government currently, our campaign team, we have been looking into uh, Zipcar. Zipcar goes to is around uh, the universities, and we plan on bringing Zipcar to our services. But in short, if you have a license, you're able to rent a car from the Ens House University. Zipcar is able to do that. I don't know if it's already here, but we plan to do that for our administration next year. And if it is here already, we want to advertise it to all students so they can be informed that it is here. Wait, what was your question? Sorry. Do you think that your administration has done things to promote uh, 
promote events or make other students of different majors, including pharmacy, nursing, other health professions in general, make them more aware of the campus activities or just what's going on with SGA and things like that? Yes, because uh, I can tell you back in the fall semester, for the first time, I don't know if it happened in the prior administration, but we met with all pharmacy presidents. I called for a meeting for all pharmacy presidents. We sat in the office, asked for their events, asked for their concerns, their needs of the pharmacy school. Uh, my fellow secretary, she's a nursing major. We stayed in contact with all of the nursing majors. Fellow council member, he's a health science major. Graduate council is a health science major. We have a diverse group of students who reached out to different uh, groups, different organizations on campus. So yes, we have stayed in contact with all majors. Okay, but just to add a little bit to that question, um, in addition to reaching out to the organizations, though, how about reaching out to the students and those majors, just in general, not the organizations, let's say. Right, but what I was saying is how the council members, it wasn't for the organization, let's say we met with the, uh, the presidents of the pharmacy, but as far as the other things I mentioned, it was for the students. Next question? Oh, uh, yes, uh, I have a quick question. Uh, I think what you guys have been talking about is reaching the student board on a mass scale and on the TV. And we buy kind of one of the few organizations where we barely charge for our services for free on campus. Mm -hmm. Our printing costs and we get charged. I don't know if Sonaka also charges a fee. But on our mm -hmm. section, we just call and we cut. Uh, of course, we've not, we've not seen anything being broadcasted lately because we rerun a new system in the super campus. I think the best goal course to do is to set up monitors around campus to advertise these events. Mm -hmm. And of course our budget is great, it's not controlled by you guys. We have new equipment, new system coming in. You have 12 members who could partake in ideas, bring it down to us. We will shoot and advertise it on campus. All we'll need more on the SGA side is to have permission and maybe a budget aside where we could put the monitors around campus ground. We will always broadcast 24 7 free of charge and just being creative and you do know how the media works and how young cats love to look at themselves right. and be on top so i think this would be a great way to look into it so that we could have i'm audience. a former member of i'm a former yes. member of the light tv i was a station manager and we've been trying to push that for the last three years i'm with you on that idea we can move forward whether the next station manager comes in office just new monitors, just set up monitors around campus, if it's around the club areas, around the library sections, and your members and the students coming in with pitches and ideas or flyers, whatever they need to come on to advertise. Write a proposal so take and move forward. Of that session, and we do it for free. Can we keep the questions short because we're running out of time? Can we listen to a few more? I have a question here. Uh, I happen to be running with Carol Hanna as her vice presidential candidate. And I've seen recently, and this is definitely geared towards Jermaine, that he says in his student government scholarships that we've raised $4,000. Over $4,000. Over $4,000. A, a small sum, but something that's respectable. Have there been any plans to grant it since we do have a quarter million dollar budget? Putting that aside, we have a huge alumni base. Has there been any plans to reach out to the alumni and open, let's say, a, a fellowship or somebody that we can we can have an endowment? that we can create a scholarship much larger than $4,000. We have, what, 75 years of, uh, of, what's it called, alumni we could definitely reach out to, or 50 years of alumni, 25 years of alumni. We could definitely have a, uh, a solid scholarship outside of four, if it's over four, it's at five, seven, 10. Why can't we have, I don't know, $50,000 worth of scholarship? Have there been any plans? Are there any plans to reach out towards it? There was a meeting at alumni, but we did not have time to complete that event that we wanted to put on, so, I, I know what you're gearing towards. We had a uh, meeting with alumni, and that meeting did not uh, go through. It did not follow through. But we do, if re-elected, we do have a plan on having an annual banquet where we have alumni come in and donate funds to the students and their departments. So then, let me ask you a question in response to that. When you've published that you've raised over $4,000, are you proud that you've raised $4,000, or are you sad that you've only raised $4,000? No, we're not sad that we only raised $4,000 because this is the giving back to the students. This is for students without GPA, but students that are in need. Any penny counts. And when we raise money within our organization, it is an honor to give back to the students. Because there are many students whose bills are not clear. There are many students that are struggling to stay in this campus. And I'm a witness. I'm coming from a single parent home. I struggle to get inside the school. I struggle all three years. And when I see as the president to give back to students who do not have a clear bill for this semester, spring bill, it is an honor.
by our organization to give back to the community and this university. Oh, my fellow yeah. peers, I want to say thank you for coming to the debate. And I, uh, I'm not saying who to vote for, but I'm saying let your voice be heard next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We have more work to do, and we desire to be back in this office and serve the student body. So may God bless you all in the best of your time. I want to give each person a closing remark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we, if we need, um, to change, you need to change the candidate that's um, currently in office. You want to see change in bed line. You guys need somebody different, somebody different in power, who have innovation. Keep it down. Um, just building off of what Akeem said for closing, um, if you do want to see change, you can't do, you can't get different results by doing the same thing over and over. It's about time for a change, and I know that's kind of copyrighted from uh, President Obama, but it is time for change, and we can do it all together. Um, and it's it's just it's it's good enough to come out and vote and show your support for whoever you think is the best candidate, no matter who it is. Um, but just keep in mind, you can't get different results by doing the same thing.